everyone! Welcome to another episode of Doodling Through Education. Like I said in my history video this week, our family took a fall break last week and it was very relaxing and I wanted to wish a very restful fall break to your family whenever you celebrate that time off. Today we're getting back to it. Um, this is a science video for CC Cycle 3, Week 10. And that means that we're talking about the respiratory system. We're talking about some parts of the respiratory system and how they all work together to help us be able to breathe. I wanted to remind you, if you haven't already, to go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode. And I also wanted to direct your attention to the description in which I posted a link. If you want to support the channel, you can do so there through Buy Me A Coffee. On that note, let's start doodling. Let's start by talking about the first part of our respiratory system the nose. Air can go through your nose or your mouth, but if it does go through your nose, the tiny hairs inside your nasal passageways, which are called cilia, protect that passageway and also help to filter out dust and any other particles that may be in the air. Your nasal cavity also warms and humidifies the air as it passes through. The next stop is the pharynx. The pharynx is where the two openings of the mouth and the nose meet. The pharynx is actually part of the digestive and respiratory system. This is a tube that leads to your esophagus and an air only opening that leads to the lungs. If food is passing through, it will go to the esophagus. If you are breathing, the air passes through and goes to what is next on our list, which is the larynx. There is a small flap of tissue called the epiglottis, and it covers the air-only passage when we swallow, keeping food and liquid from accidentally going into the lungs. So after the pharynx we mentioned is the larynx. The larynx is the next part of your respiratory system that air passes through. And it is actually the top of the air only opening after the pharynx. The larynx not only allows for this passage of air, but it is the main part of your body that lets you speak. The larynx can also be called your voice box because it contains vocal cords that vibrate and help you to make sounds. It controls both the sound and the pitch of the sound that you make. Next in line in your respiratory system is the trachea. The trachea is often called the windpipe, and it is the continuation of the airway below the larynx. The walls of the trachea have stiff rings of cartilage that strengthen this tube to make sure it always stays open. The trachea is also lined with cilia, just like the nasal passageways. And remember, cilia are tiny, hairs. They sweep fluids and foreign particles out of your airway so that they stay out of the lungs. Now following down the trachea, the tube splits to the left and right and these tubes go into your lungs. When they split into the left and right, this is called the bronchi. The bronchi then split further into even smaller tubes within the lungs called bronchioles. The bronchioles stretch out into your lungs and end in tiny air sacs called alveoli. This is where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide actually takes place. Each person has hundreds of millions of alveoli in their lungs. 
These tiny air sacs are surrounded by small blood vessels called capillaries. The air easily passes through the thin walls of the alveoli into the capillaries and then actually the carbon dioxide waste can travel back out of the blood into the alveoli. At that point, the carbon dioxide is exhaled out of the body following the same route that air came in except in reverse. This network of alveoli, bronchioles, and bronchi all put together is known as the bronchial tree and of course it is located inside your lungs. Now what are your lungs? Well, when you breathe in, your diaphragm moves downward toward your abdomen, and even your rib muscles pull the ribs upward and outward. This makes your cavity in your chest much larger, and air is pulled through when this happens, through your nose, or we said could be your mouth, into your lungs. These lungs are bag-like structures, and when the air is pulled through into your lungs, they inflate, allowing that air to go into all the parts that we just talked about. And it is also important to note that a body has two lungs, one on each side of your chest. And that's all we have for today. I hope you found it interesting following the pathway that air takes to get down into your lungs so that you have oxygen and that your body can then take in that oxygen and get the carbon dioxide exhaled out. Talk with your parents, talk with your friends on CC Day, talking about your respiratory system, how this helps your body to live, and how God created you perfect for this world that he created for us. So remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.